Namaste. I'm Isha Das. And I want to share with you a few thoughts that I think are very relevant to this holiday season. Specifically, how do we maintain our sanity in the midst of the hustle and the bustle, in the midst of all the stimulating stressors that come our way? How do we maintain our sanity? And I'm doing it from two perspectives, but they're really one and the same. Most of you know that I'm a licensed psychotherapist, and I'm also an ordained meditation teacher in the tradition of Paramahansa Yogananda. So I want to integrate psychology and spirituality in this discussion on sanity in the holiday season. And quite simply, good psychology is good spirituality, and good spirituality is good psychology. So let me begin with a working definition of insanity, and it's not so much a clinical definition as it is a, a folksy, colloquial definition. By insanity, I mean when we are driven to distraction, when we are driven not from what is true, beautiful, and good, but we are driven by our compulsions, when we are driven by impulsivity, when our attention is torn here and there, when our souls are in conflict with our bodies and our bodies are in conflict with our minds and our minds are in conflict with our heart. And that kind of insanity comes easy during the holiday season. Why? Because there's so much coming at us, so many more responsibilities that most of us have. And there's stress around getting it all done. There's stress around spending money. There's stress about planning the holiday, whether it's Christmas or Passover. And there's even stress about spending time with extended family during the holiday season. And sanity, by contrast, is when we are integrated around our souls, integrated around noble purposes, when our bodies and our minds and our hearts are working in unison with our souls around, again, a noble and worthwhile purpose. Integration is sanity, and sanity is integration. So this begs the question, how do we nurture sanity uh, in the midst of this holiday season? And I'm going to begin with something that most of you are probably figuring out that I'm going to underscore, and that's meditation. It's hard, if not impossible, to maintain a level of inner peace, of inner calm, of inner integration in the midst of this holiday season when uh, we're not meditating. Now, some of you may be saying, but I don't have the time to meditate. That's the problem. Let me share with you a story from my college days. It was exam week, and um, I was finishing up papers and um, studying for final exams, and I really wanted to do well because I was applying to graduate schools, and I was stressed and I was overwhelmed. And in the midst of this, I had an appointment with my spiritual director, and I shared with her, she was a Franciscan nun, and I shared with her how stressed I was. And she said, are you meditating? And I said, no, no, I, I don't have the time. And she said, you have to meditate. And I said, didn't you hear me? I'm stressed. I don't have the time. And then she said, it's precisely because you are stressed that you need to meditate. And she said, I promise you, if you meditate and maintain a degree of interior calm, A, your studying will be more fruitful and you will actually do better on your exams. I followed her advice, and she was right. So don't neglect your meditation time this holiday season. Begin each day in peace, in stillness, in that divine presence. Yogananda said, if we do that, we are, be we are better able to intuit the voice of the divine and the voice of our soul to guide us through 
all the challenges that come to us this holiday season. So don't neglect your meditation. Make that a priority. And I guarantee you, you will be better able to handle all the stress that comes your way, all the many decisions that you have to make. You'll be better able to handle them. Second thing, as I like to say, don't get out of bed without a focused purpose. Don't leave the house without some kind of noble goal guiding you, guiding your decisions, your thinking, and even your feeling. Some of you are familiar with the story of St. Francis of Assisi, the 12th century Catholic saint. His life was a mess. It, it was a, an example of insanity. He was driven by impulsivity, this ideology, that ideology. He was experiencing a real level of, of insanity. And somehow he made his way to this broken down chapel outside of Assisi, Italy, uh, the Chapel of San Damiano. And he was meditating on an image of the crucified Christ on a uh, on a painting in the chapel. And he heard Jesus speak to him, Francis, go and rebuild my church. The physical church was crumbling, and Francis started rebuilding churches. But his biographer, Thomas of Chilano, says that Francis, in his desire to obey what was communicated to him by Christ, he pulled together, that's literally the term that Thomas uses, that Francis pulled together all of his human energy and resources to focus on the goal of rebuilding churches. That's why Francis experienced such peace and such joy. That's why he attracted followers, because he took all of his human energies and focused them on a noble purpose, his soul's purpose. He focused them on truth, beauty, and goodness. And that brought healing to his psyche and integrated him and made him whole. So begin every day with a purpose. After your meditation, just reflect on what is my purpose today? What do I have to do to be a good father, a good mother, a good husband, a good wife, a good worker? What do I have to do today to be a good spiritual devotee? What do I have to do today to bring truth, beauty, and goodness into my life? and organize your activities around that. Even if you're doing mundane things, things at work, things for other people, let the spirit of truth and beauty and goodness be the organizing force, the inspiring force. And you will find that you will get peace and joy from your activities and you will bring peace and joy to others. Now, from a practical perspective, we're all gonna have moments where we get distracted where we lose our focus and our attention. That's okay. It's just part of the human experience. But being able to recognize when we've lost our center is important. And then being able to pull back in. So a simple thing that I do that is in the spirit of everything Paramahansa Yogananda taught and the Christian mystics teach is I stop and I breathe purposefully, intentionally, steadily and I breathe into my diaphragm and then I pause just a second or two and then I exhale and I do that a number of times and I find that it that it helps to reintegrate my psyche it helps to bring me together to a point of focused concentration and wholeness and often what I'll do as I'll breathe in and I'll pause and I'll just say a prayer in that pause. What is the most loving and intelligent thing I can do in this moment, God? What is the sanest thing that I can do in this moment? How can I bring truth, beauty, and goodness into this moment? How can I bring light into this moment? And I find that those simple prayers, again, have a powerful effect. They, they tend to, again, reorganize my psyche around 
some noble purpose, some noble cause. But it also opens me, these, those kinds of prayers and that breathing also opens us to God's grace and God's energy. And God's grace and God's energy has a way of stabilizing us, of, of bringing peace and calm uh, and a healing balm to our psyches. So if, if you lose it, just come back to the breath. And the last thing I want to say is remember that ultimately, ultimately, the collective history of the human race and our individual history, they're all in the hands of God and the Guru. We do our best to do our best and we make the best decisions that we can make. But at the end of the day, we have to surrender everything to God and to trust that, that nothing happens to us but only for us. Or as the Bible says, we trust that all things work together for the good. See, situating ourselves in a larger presence and a larger power and a power greater than ourselves and then surrendering to that higher power, to the divine, it reestablishes us in sanity, in saneness, we were never meant to carry the burdens of our lives on our own shoulders. We were meant to carry them with God and with the Guru. And by surrendering our life, our joys, our struggle, our struggles to God and Guru, we allow them to reestablish us in peace. So I hope you have a joyful holiday season. I hope the holidays are good to you. Remember that you are a child of God made in the divine image. It is your birthright to live in peace, in harmony, and in sameness. If you like this video, please give it a like. If you have a comment, please make a comment. Scroll down and make a comment. And please consider uh, forwarding it to your friends. If you found it helpful, forward it to somebody else. And again, thank you, God bless, and have a great holiday season. Namaste.